Welcome to a quick explanation of how we might uh, complete this assignment as you see it here. Uh, normally, if this were a face-to-face -face situation, we would do this in class, but uh, we'll do it together here. This is the problem uh, that we're going to work on. The information given to us is that we have found certain errors during the 2016 audit that occurred during 2014 and 15. None of them were corrected previously. So what we're going to do, as it says in the bottom, is only the books are open for 2016. So we can only make journal entries in 2016. We will only use the general ledger in 2016. Any prior years, we'll assume that they disclose all three years of financial statements, which means that on their reports, they need to make corrections uh, to any uh, previous years. That's the retrospective way of dealing with errors, is we have to go back and fix them and restate at least those years that we would generally disclose. So we're not going to make journal entries, per se, in those past years because the general ledger is not available. But rather, we will change our disclosures on the face of the financial statements for republication in 2016, or probably 2017 by the time we get the things finished and published. So first one, beginning inventory, merchandise inventory in 2014 was understated by 8640. Looking at this spreadsheet that describes what we need to do for each year, these are your answers. In 2014, we're not going to make an entry per se, but we're going to correct the disclosure by increasing cost of goods sold. That's too low because of the beginning inventory error. And decreasing retained earnings uh, that year will actually happen uh, by default. All right, so we're going to, as it flows through the, the income statement, nothing happens in 2015 because inventory is a self-correcting error. So assuming that we have 2015's inventory correct, there will be no re remaining error. Same with 2016, so no journal entry is made for this error. This is only a disclosure change for 2014. It only affects that year. Uh, so you would have an effect on the income statement uh, and the balance sheet because of the re reduced retained earnings for that year. Letter B, we sold it on December 29th. That's when it was actually sold, but we didn't record it until 2015, so that's an error. Uh, we used a periodic inventory and the merchandise was shipped, FOB shipping point, which means it, uh, as soon as it ships, it is no longer ours and was not included in any inventory. So inventory is correct because that's what it should, shouldn't be included in inventory. That's the key thing there is that you understand that the sale was recorded in the wrong year, but the inventory and cost of goods sold effect is correct. So... We don't really care about the 2400. It was done correctly. It's the 4000 we have to worry about. So, as we look at that, we're going to increase sales and increase cash receivable in 2014 by that 4000. That, by definition, is going to increase retained earnings. Uh, and then that increase in retained earnings is going to flow through to 2015, which then has to be decreased. Uh, the correct disclosure by reducing sales in 2015. So we correct the income statement by reducing sales in 2015 because the sales recorded in 2015 when it shouldn't have been. It should have been 2014. So we increase 2014, we decrease 2015, and everything is correct. They offset each other in terms of the retained earnings. So by the time we get to 2016, there is nothing wrong. Everything is uh, correct, uh, and there's no journal entry needed. Letter C is a two-year fire insurance policy purchased 
uh, debited to prepaid insurance, no adjusting entry in 2014 or 2015. We correct disclosure by increasing insurance expense and decreasing prepaid insurance for 2014 by 1920. That's eight months of that two-year policy was used in 2014. 2015, all 12 months was used. That's 2880. We correct our disclosure again by increasing insurance expense and decreasing prepaid insurance. But remember, there's no journal entry actually being made, and so the prepaid insurance still exists in 2016. Uh, we have fixed the disclosure for 2014, 2015, but now we're gonna fix the fact that we still have on our balance sheet a, an asset. But at this point, at the end of 2016, it is all used up. We credit the 5760 to prepaid insurance. We debit retained earnings for 4800 That's the last two years of expense because that's what those would have done is decrease retained earnings. So now we're doing that for ourselves in the general, uh, general ledger. And then the last four months of insurance expense was used in 2016. So assuming we haven't done that yet, that will take care of all of that prepaid insurance has now been used up. Letter D. One year note receivable, 10%, uh, making the math relatively easy, $960 a year uh, for interest. That's how much they would have received is $9,600 plus the $960 of interest in 2015. So the problem here is that instead of, uh, we didn't make an accrual at end of 2014. So some of the interest revenue or interest income was should have been recorded in 2016, 15, I mean, sorry, 2014. Get my years mixed up here. So we need to increase our interest income and interest receivable by 240 uh, for 2014 on our disclosure. Uh, in 2015, we need to decrease our interest income, offsetting that uh, in same increase uh, in 2015 by 240 so that uh, we move the income from 2015 to 2014. Um, with that change, there will become a you know offsetting change to retained earnings so that everything is correct and there is no journal entry needed in 2016 because the, the note has been collected and everything is taken care of um, by that point, so no entry. Letter E, last one. Um, we have equipment that was bought on January 1st, 2014, 39,200. Uh, no depreciation expense, so we missed depreciating this equipment. Straight line, so 39,20 a year for our calculation for for depreciation. So. 2014, we just need to go back. Uh, we'll fix depreciation expense, make it go up by 39.20, and accumulate depreciation on the balance sheet. We'll go up by 20, 39.20 as well. And we will correct our disclosure in 2015 by the same, the same way. So for both years, our retained earnings need to be decreased by 78.40 for past years. Our depreciation for 2016 will be recorded as depreciation expense, 39.20, and we have accumulated depreciation, 11.760. So we do have to make a journal entry because as an asset, it is still on our books and it's still wrong and needs to be fixed. Anything that's going to come off of our books, for instance, the receivables, uh, so forth, uh, inventory, those things have all been corrected and so therefore we don't make typically journal entries to them in the current year if it only affected past years. But an asset like this, retained earnings, I mean, with a long-term asset, uh, or one that has not been amortized or used up, 
that needs to be corrected because it's still wrong in 2016. Therefore, that's why those journal entries are needed.